adjusting options and vignettes. All right, we're picking up right where we left off on the last image. Here we used a selection in Photoshop combined with three focus bugs to create this complex mask, which recreates depth of field receding from the monks to the background. In this movie, we're going to talk about adjusting some of the options. The options give you additional controls over the blurred area of the image, and they live right here in the options menu right underneath blur. Let's go ahead and talk about each in turn. The first one is highlight bloom. The highlight bloom controls how prevalent highlight shapes are in your background. Now, on this image, we don't have too many. There's a few in the rafters and a couple in the background. Let's crank this way up so you can see what happens with a high bloom amount. You can see how all those little highlights take on the shape of the aperture of the lens. And with night scenes, or scenes where there's a lot of highlights or point light sources in the background, this can be a really fun effect, really bring up the shape of those highlights. Underneath highlight bloom are brightness and contrast. This allows you to control the actual tonality of only the blurred area. In this case, let's go ahead and try bringing the brightness down a little bit. And you can see as we decrease the brightness, it's only affecting the blurred area of the region, either making it lighter or darker. In this case, let's make it darker. This really helps make the monks pop out more by giving a dark background behind their bright red umbrellas. You could also change the contrast in this region as well by increasing or decreasing the contrast. Below brightness and contrast is film grain. Film grain is actually an important tool inside a focal point. If you've ever looked at an image that's out of focus in the camera, the grain or the noise pattern, basically the structure of the image, still exists in the blurred area. But when we blur something through software like focal point or Photoshop, we lose that structure of the image in the blur and can take on an artificial appearance. By turning on film grain and then adjusting the slider up slowly, you can bring back some of the grain or some of that noise pattern, the structure of the image, so that it matches the rest of the image. It'll make the blurred region look more realistic. Turn it on, set the film grain to zero, and then slowly bring it up until it matches the structure in the rest of the image. It's best to compare an area that is in focus and out of focus side by side to adjust it. This also helps in the printing process to make sure that your blurred areas print properly and don't posterize. In this movie, we also want to talk about using the vignette controls. If you watch the first movie about how to use the focus bug, you learn that you can control the vignette by using the left-hand antenna. You can also control everything from here in the vignette pane. In the vignette pane, there's the lightness slider, and lightness controls whether you want to create a darker vignette by moving to the left or a lighter vignette by moving it to the right. The midpoint controls the relative size of the vignette to the image. We'll show you how to use that in a second. There's two checkboxes below as well. One is called overlay blending. Overlay blending will maintain more of the detail and the luminosity in the areas that are lightened or darkened in that vignette area. It may also shift the color slightly as well. It depends on an image by image basis which you'd like to use. For a more subtle effect, leave the overlay blending on. The option below that is vignette follows the focus bug. And if I make this really, really dark, you'll see that the vignette is affecting basically the entire area outside of the focus bugs. If I disable this option, it'll become more of a natural shape vignette, which only affects the edges of the image instead. I'm going to disable the overlay blending option for this image and go for more of a natural dark vignette. I'm going to make it very strong so that we can look at the midpoint. The midpoint slider controls the relative size of that vignette. I can have it be very large or have it just barely touch the edge of the image. Best thing to do is start with the midpoint about in the middle, adjust the lightness to where you'd like, and then adjust the midpoint forward and backwards to set the size just where you'd like it to be. There we go. All right, let's go ahead and turn our preview on and off so we can see the difference. There's our original image from Photoshop and then our after from focal point. We used a selection in Photoshop as well as three focus bugs to set our plane of focus. And then by using the options, we darkened the blurred area and then also added a little bit of vignettes to the corners to burn the corners down. You can see how this really focuses the viewer's eye on our subject, the monks, and removes those distractions in the background.